Welcome to the Sages Among Us. The true gold in our region lies in the many people who devote countless hours toward the betterment of their communities. Today we're going to hear the personal story of an individual who is deeply engaged in our community, find out what they do to help their fellow citizens, and hopefully learn ways that we too can make a positive difference in our community. I'm Norm Westmore, and today I'm talking with Mark Vance. Mark, welcome to our program. Oh, it's nice to be here, Norm. Thank, Thank you for you. having me. Thank you. Well, first of all, I'll tell you a little bit about Mark. Um, he's lived in Nevada City since 1971, and he's uh, played an extensive role as a composer, conductor, educator, arranger, uh, and an advocate of new music with uh, original compositions in every genre. Uh, Mark has served as the uh, executive director uh, for the Nevada County Composers Cooperative since 2001. Uh, and uh, Mark is also um, heads up the Music in the Mountains Education uh, Committee and coordinator for that since 2007. Um, he's uh, instituted, created, and cultivated an impressive catalog of music education programs and scholarships um, reaching uh, K through college students. We're going to hear a lot more about those programs uh, in a few minutes. Um, and I think one of the real special programs we're going to hear about tonight is uh, the Young Composers Project that Mark is a, plays a key role in and leads. And uh, in addition to that, uh, Mark has been um, a, uh, <clears throat> a leader in the uh, uh, commissioning group Tangible Applause, and uh, also, Mark uh, majored in composition at uh, the Cincinnati Conservative of Music. Um, and he uh, instrumental studies include clarinet, flute, uh, alto saxophone, piano, classical guitar, and voice with Robert McFerrin. My gosh, I'm exhausted already. So, <laughs> uh, Mark, let's start off with uh, you um, telling us a, a little bit about the uh, children's programs and youth programs at Music in the Mountains that you uh, lead. Well, it's an impressive catalog of education programs. And uh, it starts off with the Young Musicians Competition. We have the Young Composers Project. We have a Peers Performing for Peers, a Classics for Kids, Music Live. We have a host of scholarships and all kinds of very impressive, very impressive music programs. And uh, so you're reaching uh, grade school children and, uh, and college age? All the way through pre-K, oh, okay. through college. And I think the lovely thing is that uh, it spans all races. It spans all incomes, right. Uh, right. All, all of that. And so we have lots of kids and their parents involved. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, tell us a little bit about the Young Composers uh, Project. Young Composers is probably one of my very favorite programs, so thank you for asking me to, to talk about it. Paul Perry came to me, who was the founding father of Music in the Mountains right. uh, around 2000, and said, how about if you do a composition program, mm -hmm. education program? And I said, that sounds like fun. <laughs> how, how might you we, being a composer? <laughs> how might we do that? And so we talked about it a little bit and came up with sort of the bare bones, bare bones idea. And uh, at this point, we're in year sixteen, fifteen, sixteen. Is that right? And you're still standing, and <laughs> <laughs> still have all my fingers and toes. But it's a great opportunity for students who are interested in writing and learning how to write and use music software, learn about all this music curriculum, music theory, music harmony, uh, music history. We also have a section on public speaking because they have to get up in front of the audience and talk about who they are and what they've written. Mm -hmm. It's a great opportunity for them to do it, to learn these things and write music and get it performed by professional musicians uh, in the county. It's, it's just a terrific, wow. terrific education program and something I probably would have given my left arm for uh, as a kid. <laughs> yeah, right, right, yeah. So, you know, one of the things uh, about some of your programs is it's not just about learning about music, but you're um, learning about um, nature, right? Was there a program a few years ago where you featured uh, the Salmon Run? We had a really nice collaborative 
interdisciplinary program uh, two years ago where we took the young composers out to the Yuba River mm-hmm. with Sierra Streams Institute. Oh, yeah, right. right. Uh, and collaborated with that nonprofit. And it was an opportunity for the kids to get out of the classroom sure. and uh, f- find their way in nature. Right. Uh, we talked Freeze a lot to about death on the river, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> there, were some, there were some cold days in February in, oh Deer, in Deer Creek, for instance. Oh, yeah. But uh, we talked a lot about the, the, uh, the salmon and mm-hmm. macroinvertebrates and how important they are to the watersheds in Nevada County and, of mm-hmm. course, everywhere. Uh, and the kids wrote music inspired by their, mm-hmm. inspired by their trips outdoors. Mm. They would have had that experience. So, so music was incorporated in their learning, uh, not only about composition, uh, but their own experience about learning about salmon and nature, right? Yeah, it was really a terrific opportunity to, to kind of demonstrate to them that music doesn't just exist on an island all by itself. Right. And it, it's involved with all these different things we do, and it's a part of us. I mean, who who doesn't jump in their car or go to the market and have a song running through their head that they're right. that they're thinking about or tune their whistling? And this just demonstrates it even even more. Well, that project also uh, was a, a video was made of that, was, was it not? And PBS documentary wow. that's been floating around. Uh, Mike Blaybaum, who's a local filmmaker, very talented mm-hmm. man. Uh, uh, filmed that and it's floating around PBS and you may catch it if you All right. tune into PBS. Oh, that's a great that's a great program. Uh, you're listening to the Sages Among Us on KVMR and KCPC. I'm Norm Westmore, and uh, today we're talking with Mark Vance. Uh, Mark has got uh, all kinds of experience. Uh, he's a local composer, and he also uh, uh, operates the Music in the Mountains um, education uh, program for children and youth. And uh, Mark, you've given a lot back to this community, and a lot, a lot of young people. You've inspired them and led them. Um, and I, I guess I'm interested in why, why you, why do you do this? <laughs> I guess it, Norm, it, that old cliche about it takes a village, mm-hmm. and that education doesn't just happen. And experiences don't just happen. You don't just walk through your path in life and all these things happen mm-hmm. to you. I think you realize that uh, to be part of a community, you have to give back, mm-hmm. of course. And what better way to give back in in a subject or in a, in a medium that you're co- confident in and, mm-hmm. and strong? Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it, it only makes sense that I'm working, of course, in music, but there's so many other wonderful ways to give back as well that's right and and you know in that role that you have uh, you're inspiring these young young people who uh, maybe didn't have an opportunity to learn how to compose i mean they may maybe learned an instrument or uh, maybe the, their voice was their instrument but you're expanding that opportunity yeah, yeah um going back to this uh, collaboration with sierra streams right. 10 of the top students actually wrote compositions for orchestra i mean okay. absolutely unheard of for wow. kids that age right. that that are that are teens writing pieces for orchestra and getting them performed by a by a high caliber orchestra yeah. i mean it's just just incredible opportunities uh, yeah that's great that's absolutely great um well, is there anybody uh, in your history or uh, going back when uh, you were uh, younger um, that inspired you on this path um, that you'd like to acknowledge or you think about? Uh, what was it that, that, that maybe um, happened that said, oh, gosh, that's what I want to do. That's my life journey. Well, I think to be very honest with you, I, I think my mother was uh-huh. a huge influence. And, of course, mothers are. Right. But she was a professional musician. She was a beloved uh, high school choir teacher. And long after she retired, her kids, still no longer kids, her (laughs) students meaning, uh, still got in touch with her. And she was one of those real dynamos and and forces in her community Mm -hmm. and when I was growing up. And she uh, was very encouraging to me about Mm -hmm. pursuing things that meant, meant something significant to me. And I'd have to say, of course, of course, her. I was very fortunate to have a, an impressive list of teachers and mentors. Mm-hmm. I did study with Copeland. I did study oh, really? with Boulez. Oh. Uh, 
these are movers and shakers in the new music world, right. or it was new music at one time. I'm not so <laughs> sure it's new music now at this point. But, time marches on, right? But studying with people like that, working with people like that, uh, who are so well known mm-hmm. and appreciated nationally, well across the world, uh, it really gives you pause and makes you think that I mean, hang on every word. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about the uh, Nevada uh, County uh, Cooperative, uh, Composers Cooperative. You're involved in that, have been involved for a long time. Uh, tell us a little bit about that uh, organization and, it, and, and what does it uh, accomplish? Nevada County Composers Cooperative. Thanks for asking about that. It's a group of old composers. Uh, <laughs> as contrasted with the young, young, <laughs> young Composers Program. Well, there are some of us that want to try to write professionally Mm -hmm. and feel like we're driven to and sell our music and work off commissions. Uh, And there are quite a few that live in this area. Um, Some notables, of course, are Terry Riley and uh, uh, Howard Hirsch, Mm -hmm. Jay Seideman, Jerry Grant, Mm -hmm. myself. They're all part of the Composers Cooperative. And uh, this is a this is a group, it's a, it's a small nonprofit mm-hmm. that encourages composers to write their music mm-hmm. and then is actively promoting it uh, in, in terms of concerts, selling tickets, okay. and finding musicians to perform it. Okay. And that's incredibly important because if we aren't encouraging new art to be created, then we turn into librarians at some, oh, right, at right, some point. Yeah, right. We don't have any new material. Right. right. Now, does the uh, you mentioned old? So do. <laughs> uh, oh, you had to bring up experience. That. Experience, right? maybe experience. Right. Uh, now, do any of the young composers actually uh, work with the composers cooperative? Uh, you mentioned the uh, young composers group of Music of the Mountains. Does some right. of those right. young people get involved? Because we have such a wide age range, mm. usually I will invite one or two of the uh, older students mm-hmm. who are seniors in high school okay. or freshmen, sophomores in college to come on board the board of directors. Okay. This gives them a great insight into what how a nonprofit works and how much hard work it is. And you're always talking about fundraising and really giving them that, that intense uh, sight into what a nonprofit is and the whole idea around new music and which they're a part of as a student but then to see it in full full force with professionals i think right. it's it's a great opportunity for them of course it looks great on their resume and of course, and, of course. and in in this day and age you need to have a an impressive resume when you yeah, head off to certainly, college certainly yeah so that, that that helps them on that and and helps in their um Maybe getting into a college or getting a scholarship and so of on. Of course, yeah, yes, right. you bet. That's great. Great. Uh, you're invo- invited to join the conversation. Uh, if you have questions uh, for Mark uh, or something you'd like to share about your own experience um, in this area, uh, give us a call at KVMR. The number is 530-265-9555 uh, to join the conversation. Threw me off a little bit. Well, Mark, um, as we were talking uh, earlier, um, a lot of programs at Music in the Mountains, and uh, you're involved in a brand new endeavor. I guess it's new. It's music for uh, new for Music in the Mountains, and that's the youth orchestra. So tell us about that. And uh, is it new? And where does it stand? I'm it's pretty exciting. S- I'm uh, so excited, Norman. Thanks for bringing up the youth orchestra. We're calling it the Music in the Mountains. Youth Orchestra or Mimeo, <laughs> as uh, it kind of rolls, it have a, rolls off the tongue. Yeah, it sure does. Yeah, it's been on my want list forever as education coordinator for 
Music in the Mountains, I feel like it's a real cornerstone of a music education program is to have a youth orchestra. And uh, we don't have an orchestra up here. We don't have a youth orchestra up right. here. Right. There are some good band programs mm -hmm. in some of the schools, uh, but many of them have lost their programs and or uh, had their music programs trimmed back substantially. Right. Uh, gone from one teacher to, I mean, from two teachers to one, that sort of thing. Now one teacher teaches choir as well as band, and that gets tricky. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, a youth orchestra, how exciting is that? Mm -hmm. We actually today are interviewing, have been interviewing potential conductors okay. and, right. and are, are very excited about that. We've got a, a long-range program, uh, multi-stepped. We're starting off with a small string orchestra, which mm -hmm. is the way you do, mm -hmm. and you build those string players up, and then you, you skim off some of the top players, and you start adding instruments, okay. the rest of the instruments, right. flutes, clarinets, trumpets, trombones, percussion, right. and you create kind of a beginning intermediate orchestra. So you have this string pool or string orchestra right. that's developing, always percolating, and then you start taking that off for a beginning or intermediate orchestra, and then after a year or two, you start skimming that and creating an advanced orchestra. I and see. eventually that advanced orchestra over a period of six or seven years mm -hmm. will then be able to sit side by side with the MIM orchestra, oh, right, play. Right, right. Yeah, what a great opportunity. Right. And so you're giving students this huge range of you know coming in as, mm -hmm. a, as a beginner or just slightly past beginner, learning to play and going through and learning some of the, arguably, some of the world's greatest music. Yes. Well, it seems that Music in the Mountains and, and our other uh, arts organizations have done a, a great job in presenting music. Uh, what this is is is, is one area that uh, seems to me hasn't been uh, fulfilled. And is this correct, or has there been a youth orchestra in the past, and it it you know it kind of dissolved or went away? And what 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 is its history? There have been a lot of youth orchestras up here, <laughs> and uh, very well-meaning people, very talented people, very bright people ha had gotten wild hair and said, you know what, I'm going to do it, right. and it's, it hasn't been sustainable. And oh, so okay. some of them flounder quickly, and some of them hang on for a year or two mm -hmm. and, then, and then dissolve. And, of course, what's happening with the youth orchestra is that you're bringing in youngers, mm -hmm. and you're keeping mm -hmm. them, training them, mm -hmm. encouraging them to practice, bringing up their playing level, and then moving them on to another level, right. and hopefully keeping them all the way through high school and or possibly college, mm -hmm. as, as we have the college here. Right. Okay. And, and, and it, it takes some real long-range planning and some serious infrastructure to be able to to do something like that. So I applaud anybody that started a youth orchestra because I think it's so important, but it's a lot of work. Well, what do you think uh, will be contribute to the success and sustainability of this youth orchestra if it's been tried in the past? What, what do you think are the key factors that will su sustain this? Well, you're looking at him. <laughs> No, You're it. It's, yeah. not, it's, it's not just that, of course. Uh, I mean, I'm very passionate about it, but mm -hmm. uh, uh, having an organization like Music in the Mountains, mm -hmm. who is dedicated to, to classical music in the community, uh, is huge. And somebody who has that kind of power, mm -hmm. that, kind of, mm -hmm. that kind of validity, they've been here for, what, this, what is this, year 34, year 35, right, something right. like that. It's, it's impressive doing what they're doing and continually growing yeah. and, and they have you know, that lends the financial support because this is uh, probably one of the areas that many times that uh organizations uh aren't sustainable is because the financial resources are not there oh yeah they, they'll they'll dry up quickly yeah, right. but i think if you stop to consider what touches our community maybe more than anything are our kids mm -hmm. you know they're our future in two blinks norm they're going to be interviewing each other and you and i are going to be long gone right and if we don't take care of them the way we should then who's going to do that right, right. and right. and having those opportunities are so important just because you're living in what we call the rural foothills mm -hmm. doesn't mean that you shouldn't be playing music right well uh tell us a little bit about how if if someone is interested in 
um, you know, either a parent or a young person is interested in, let's say, uh, auditioning for uh, the youth orchestra. How would they go about that, and 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 what kind of uh, information is going to be out there, and and uh, to become involved in that? Well, I'm glad you asked because it's so important. Uh, I think there are probably a lot of people out there listening and thinking, "Oh, my grandson or my daughter or the next door neighbor's daughter or." twins or whatever this would be perfect for them and so call music of the mountains here's the number 530-265-5347 and we will be happy to talk to you about auditioning for the right. for the youth youth orchestra and what's involved and what might that be starting out in uh, what several months or it's it started monday night so okay so it's now it's, we have an assist, launch we have an assistant conductor okay and i'll mention her name sage poe She's right. Right. Yeah. come through. She's been the poster child for Music in the Mountains. Right. Fabulous young harpist. She's just finished her college education, got her teaching credential at Carnegie Mellon in Pittsburgh. How did that happen so soon? <laughs> I know. Did we blink? Did we <laughs> blink? Her parents probably think the same thing, right? <laughs> She's back. She's the assistant oh, okay. conductor. And uh, we so we met for the first night with uh, 20 some odd young string students, okay. one cello. Uh, and a slew of violins. Uh, we will have some violas. We're trying to integrate a lot of the local string teachers and encourage them to come oh, in okay. and sit in the sections and do rehearsals right. Right. so that the kids can mentor with the professionals uh, in the area that are teaching strings. I think it's going to be – we've thought of a lot of aspects that are, are I think are really key to making this program go. Wow, that's really that is it. That is a, a really positive sign. Thanks for doing that. That's great. Oh, I'm excited about it. Yeah, Thanks for asking me yeah, about it. Yeah. And just remember, it's a call to music in the mountains. Okay, okay, all right. That's super. Um, let's uh, change directions just a little bit. You um, you do all of this in in uh, teaching composition and all of this, but you're also um, an accomplished uh, composer as well. So tell us a little bit about your work in that area. And I I just curious. How do you find time to compose? <laughs> well, those hours between two in the morning <laughs> and five. Are, That's when you're brilliant. Then, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with the help of uh, a lot of caffeine. I'm, yeah. No, uh, sometimes that suffers because mm -hmm. I'm involved in, in so many aspects of education and working with a lot of youth, and it's very rewarding. And sometimes I just have to say, well, I'm not going to get much writing done today because mm – -hmm these other things are happening but the way any artist that's serious about their work has to approach things and and work is to say i've got this time set aside and it may be one hour it may be four hours you and i were talking about this a little bit before we came on the air and that many times when you're when you're doing creative work, you need large sections of time. Mm -hmm, so you need mm -hmm, three, right. four, five hours right. of time to really kind of drill down yeah. and look at things in a macro kind of way without being distracted. Sometimes you're doing busy work that is copying and pasting and that kind of thing, and you can kind of come into that and work for half an hour or an hour without much – you know, it doesn't matter. Right, right. But if you're doing a lot of creative work, you really have to you really have to settle down and say, hey, look, this is my time to – to do this getting the right right frame, in of, frame mind, of mind yeah, and being the creative part of you can really engage it, right exactly right yeah that's great now uh as you work in compositions what are what are what genres are your uh, that you you feel comfortable with and, and really like and have a passion for or does it cover the the whole spectrum i have a passion for all music mm -hmm. and this is one thing that it's very important to me then and i try to uh, convince my students that even though they may like this particular kind of music or that kind of music, all music is good. Mm -hmm. And it's so easy to be derogatory. It's so <laughs> easy to say, oh, that sucks. Oh, that kind of me. Oh, you know, oh, rap. Oh, classical. Oh, opera. How could anybody listen to opera? It's, it's like, hold on. Hold on. Let's think about that. First of all, what do you know about that? What do you know about that genre? Very little, well, there's why you're saying that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. It's all important. It's all art. All art is important. And just because it doesn't touch you or me doesn't mm -hmm. mean it won't touch the very next person sitting next to us or walking by us in the, in the, uh, 
in the art museum yeah. or at the concert hall. Right. And and it's all valid. So uh, I'm primarily a classical composer. Okay. Uh, I write for classical instruments. I write for traditional acoustic ins- instruments. Right. I love working with musicians, talking about performance, rehearsing, mm-hmm. and recording works, performances. It's terrific. You know, Mark, I think we have just a minute or so that um, might be helpful to uh, actually uh, listen to a sample of uh, your uh, your works. And and and, and uh, this is uh, a piece that you um, composed. And uh, can we do that for just a, maybe a minute and give our listeners a sample of uh, some of your creative genius? Let's let's do that. Okay. Mark, what was that uh, work? Tell it's us the second bit. movement. It's called Warm and Tender. It's for a piano trio, which is piano, violin, and cello. Mm-hmm. It's a standard trio. Uh, it was commissioned work for a hotshot group of players at USC called the Pegasus Trio. Oh, um, okay. Very, very talented. Three very talented young women. Oh, my goodness. Now, now when did you uh, create this work for them? That was commissioned for them uh, maybe ten years ago. Oh my goodness! Yeah, yeah. And and what are you working on now? Uh, or or would you like to be working on maybe? Give Actually, your... I have several big work, several big commissions. I have a oh. commission for a percussion quartet, mm-hmm. for a uh, high powered group out of Fresno State. Mm-hmm. Uh, very talented players, and with a percussion quartet, it, it's like the whole ball of wax. It's the whole kitchen sink. So every percussion instrument that you can imagine could be incorporated. Vibraphone, marimba, xylophone, those are pitched instruments, of course, but then anything you can beat on. I mean, percussionists are crazy. They, they will <laughs> pound on anything. All, all you have to do is give them the okay. Like, yeah, okay. Well, yeah, Pieces of two by four? Sure. <laughs> So I'm working on that, and, I've, okay. and I'm also working on, I'll be working on a project with the uh, high school chamber choir. Oh, okay. uh, it's a project I call Live Composer in the Classroom. We go, I go in, and we talk about writing a piece. They talk about what, what it is that we might write uh, together, and then they learn it and perform it at the end of the year. I'm also working on a uh, set of solo piano pieces for, uh, for a local pianist, Lynn Shugrin, who lives in the area. Uh-huh. So you you have commissioned, and then you have some that you just are your own creations. Uh, commissioned, yeah, and so commissioned means somebody's actually paying me to, uh, right, to, right, to write exactly. this, which I think is a lovely, lovely thought. <laughs> yeah. And then my work that I do with the high school is is a volunteer. So a volunteer I, I I come in, and yeah. I think it's really important that kids get the opportunity to see a live composer. Because so many times they're handed music and they learn it and they sing it, but there's a kind of a disconnect between who wrote it. Right, right. Mark, I want to thank you. Is there anything in, in closing here? We have about another minute uh, that uh, you'd like to comment on your activities. I'm amazed at all of the things you do for our youth and our community and uh, giving back. Um, anything that uh, else that you'd like to share with our listeners? What have we missed? <laughs> Uh, we, we're very fortunate to live here. This is a special place. And I think anything that we, we do, any of us do, to help promote it and 
caress it and take care of it is a good thing. That's great. And one of the reasons why this is such a great place and a great place for our young people are people like you. Thank you so much, Mark, for what you give back to this community and your creative talent in so many areas. Thanks, Norm. We're, we're very blessed to have you in this community. Thank you. This show is an outgrowth of the research project that led to the book, The Sages Among Us, Harnessing the Power of Civic Engagement. If you'd like to learn more about how you can make a difference or learn more about the project, go to cnlsierra.org or call 530-265-5600. I'm Norm Westmore. You've been listening to The Sages Among Us and our guest, Mark Vance, on KVMR, Nevada City. Tune in next Wednesday to hear another uh, leader in our community giving back.